Happy holidays! I hope you have been enjoying your holidays with your friends and family. It's time for a Q&A because it's nearing the end of December and I do a monthly Q&A on YouTube. Since it's the last one of this year, I thought it should be on the topic of 2019. So I asked you guys for questions on Patreon, Instagram, and of course the YouTube community tab. If you didn't get a notification, turn on your notification so that you can ask me questions the next time. All right, let's just get started because I am very awkward right now because my parents are next door and I feel very self-conscious. I'll start off with Patreon because I recognize your username quite a bit because you comment a lot. So from Andres Gunther, what was your most memorable experience or event this year? It's very hard for me to pick, but probably my time during the Dresden Music Festival. I was there for about four weeks and I got to go to so many concerts and also meet so many different artists and just completely immerse myself in the classical music culture and the music there. So it was great. Next one is from Andy. What's the saddest song you've learned? This year, it's definitely List Sonato del Peltraca. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure how you say the name correctly, so I'll just put the title here. I cried a lot. That's all I'll say. From Andil Han, what was your favorite composition that you have learned in 2019? Brahms Cello Sonata Number no. 1. I don't know why that came up, but it's not a solo piece for whatever reason. Next from's from Max. What would you change about what you did this year? I'm not sure I would change anything about what I've done. Maybe in the beginning of the year, the first half of the year, if I had spent more time just trusting my guts about a lot of things. But I'm very grateful for where I am right now in my life, so I don't know if I would change anything necessarily. From Larry David. Will you be entering in any competitions next year? Nope. From Stelly. What was your favorite opportunity this year? Considering you are grateful for all of them. Yes, I am grateful for all of them. It's so hard to pick because so many things happened. I don't know how to pick. I can't pick. The fact that I had a concert season, that itself is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And so everything that is part of that is what I'm gonna say for this answer. I don't know, it's so hard. <laughs> From Jesus, looking back at the past decade, would you have ever imagined being where you are today? What would be one thing you would tell 2010 Tiffany if you could travel back in time? Hmm, no, to the first part of the question. I don't think I would think that I could be sitting right now in front of a Steinway piano in my apartment in New York. So there's that. What was I doing in 2010? I don't know what I was doing in 2010. What was, was I doing? Oh, stop trying to fit in is probably what I would tell my younger self in 2010 and maybe even last year's self also. <laughs> because if I try to fit in, I would not be doing this right now and would not have so many of you supporting me. So thank you. <laughs> How much German can you speak since you've been to Germany so many times? Uh, ich spreche nicht Deutsch. Is that correct? I'm trying, trying slowly. Some of you asked some really difficult questions. So Nina asked, what was your hardest lesson to learn this year? I think knowing what's the best way to say something to different kinds of people. From Gemma, do you make plans for the new year? If so, what were some plans for 2019 that you accomplished? Glad you asked, I have something to show you. So this has been sitting in my manager's office for a long time and this is my first time seeing it. Okay, ready? I mean, we've done this for how many months now? We reached 100,000 in April and it's December, so this is very outdated. But still, here's a letter and then... Ah! Oh, this award was inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> now, oh look, hello. Yes, this was one of the goals. I will roll back the clip right now where I said, I really, really want to have 
and reach 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully earlier than the end of next year, just because I feel like if I can be fully confident and embrace this whole YouTube thing, then I can grow much faster and reach a larger audience. So we've done it and we actually did it <laughs> in the first half of the year. So since then, we are now past 161,000, I think. So I don't really know how it's gonna grow <laughs> by the end of next year. And I don't really wanna put a number on it because I am um, a bit scared of jinxing myself, but I hope we keep growing and that we keep learning and keep appreciating classical music. 2019 has been such an unusually good year that I'm kind of scared about 2020 in a way. So I hope that it will be even better from what I've done and from what has happened so far in 2019. A very good question someone asked from Lin, I think that's your name. <laughs> I think you never said what you are striving towards do. Did you have a big goal for 2019? If yes, what was it? Well, this was one of the goals, just growing my YouTube and really being confident on YouTube, being confident in general. Also, that's true, I never say <laughs> what it is that I am striving towards, but being a concert pianist and really touring around, I mean, I am climbing up slowly, but hopefully, knock on wood, that it will keep going up. But a lot of things, there's you know, being able to tour around and also play with amazing conductors and artists, musicians, and also, beep, also to introduce classical music to a wider audience and hopefully revive it in a way that I think has been working so far, but I feel like I can always do better. So that's why I always say keep striving because I'm never satisfied with what I have so far, I always want to do more and do better so that's why i say keep striving being a concert pianist that's like the main thing but there are a lot of different things around it that i'm striving towards like playing better on a certain piece or being better person or something like that so i hope that answers it merry christmas to you too that's also related to dylan's question how do you feel about the relevancy of classical music in 2019 and keeping the tradition alive while still innovating yeah this is a very dangerous line of trying to be innovative yet also getting people to understand what you're doing in the classical music world and I am very very happy to see that more and more people are accepting what I'm doing and understanding it I think that's what I've learned this year in 2019 uh, based on just the reactions of concert presenters and artists that I've met it's very easy for people to assume that what I'm doing is just a gimmick and or that I'm not a serious classical musician, that I just want to be narcissistic on camera or something. But I think I've met more and more people who understand the importance of what I'm trying to do here, which is getting a more engaged audience for classical music. Of course, I'm very honored that Steinway also understands what I'm doing and so has been very supportive of me and there will be some more interesting videos coming out and I hope you guys will enjoy it because I think these are very unusual things that I am very lucky to be allowed to do. I got some questions about music so I thought I would change scenery. I really like this question from Hershita. If you had to summarize this year 2019 with a piece, what would it be? It's so hard. The first thing that came to mind was Schumann Carnival, but the only reason is probably because it's got so many different moods, but maybe Fantasy Stücke would be better. Because it's not like I spent 2019 waltzing around, <laughs> although I did very much enjoy 2019. I don't know, Fantasy Stücke? Because some parts of it were a bit fantasy-like. Ooh, or Kinder Zenin. Yeah. Hmm, that's one of those three, or a combination of those three. I remember when I used to start every single vlog with this. So, hmm, maybe also Kinder Zenin. I don't know. It's a good question. I wish I had a more concrete answer, but so many things happen. It's hard to pick. For mine's Ben Doma. 
sorry if I'm not pronouncing your username correctly. The piece you've enjoyed the most performing this year. Schumann Carnival. Absolutely. From Misha, your favorite concert this year and why? Bielefeld was probably my favorite solo concert. Everything about that trip was just, it was great. That concert was my favorite. From Sophia Clara, you played Schumann's Carnival this year quite often. Yep. <laughs> what do you think is so special to those miniatures of compositions and in general its composer, Robert Schumann? Hmm, I think the amount of imagination and combined with German Romanticism, those two qualities are ones that I very much admire and the fact that I can play the pieces differently, the pieces inside the carnival differently every time I play it. It's just a lot of fun and it challenges and also inspires my imagination every time I approach the character pieces because there's so many different characters and moods and emotions and thoughts. So that's why I really, really enjoy playing Schumann and Carnival in particular. But I'll also have fun playing Papillon next season, which starts in uh, three weeks. See you in Netherlands and in Brown University and Salzburg and Dresden and more dates to come. Everything's linked in the description, by the way. Nina, a different Nina, asks, what did you accomplish this year in music that you're really proud of? I think I have gotten more comfortable and confident and focused in performing. So knock on wood that this will continue. But it really takes practice to be comfortable on stage and I've definitely had a lot of performing opportunities this year for me to just practice performing in a sense. What are your 2020 goals regarding piano from Let Us... I wanted to say avocado, but haha, nice pun. What techniques or pieces would you like to master next? Brahms Concerto Number no. 1. That is going to be happening in Salzburg in April, and everything about that piece and being able to play that piece are things that I am trying to work towards. So the sound, the power, the musicality, the rubato, so many things I can't describe in words, but hopefully I can, not hopefully, but I will definitely be striving towards my ideal interpretation of that piece and through that, I will have to work a lot. Last question from Density Lopez. I think this is a good one to end on. Are you a full-time pianist and YouTuber? Kind of. I still don't want to use that word to describe myself, YouTuber, because I am a concert pianist first and foremost and I don't think I'm a YouTuber although I've been called many different things. <laughs> I still would like to be known as a concert pianist who happens to make YouTube videos about her life and being a concert pianist. I think that's all I have for this year's Q&A. Thank you very much for submitting your questions. Sorry if I couldn't get to yours, it's probably because they weren't on the topic of 2019. I got so many of those. <laughs> so keep striving, and I hope you enjoyed some sceneries of New York City around the holidays, and I will see you. Actually, I don't know when I'll see you. I may or may not upload another video before the end of the year, because I want to upload this on Christmas Day. So I will see you sometime soon, but thank you very, very much for your support this year, could not do any of the things without you guys. So, very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, and uh, what else do I have to say? Thank you. Cheerios came to mind. Cheerios! Um, I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>